Holla, holla, welcome to Fully Charged. Now, a quick reminder before I start, we are rapidly approaching 1 million subscribers and there's a competition running. We told you many times before, we're just reminding you now, for four lucky people around the world to win an electric car for a whole year, for free, for nothing, gratis. All details are in, are in the links beneath this exciting episode. So, and it is an exciting episode because as regular viewers are well aware, we have seen our share of 100% electric compact crossovers, or what I call SUVs. That shape and style, sort of big, high up, lumpy cars that don't look very aerodynamic and are, you know, I mean, it's just, there's so many of them, loads of them. So whenever anything emerges from a car maker that looks a little bit different, I'm always keen to take a closer look. And lo, before us appeared the Cooper Bourne. Now, a tiny bit of background for normal people who don't know the intricacies of a car maker's history. Cupra is the high-performance motorsport subsidiary of Seat Motors, the Spanish car maker. They made loads of rally cars in the 80s and 90s that did all sorts of winning things. And the Cupra Bourne is their first 100% built from the ground up electric high-performance hatchback. Now, this car is based on Volkswagen Group's MEB platform, and because of this, there are a few variants available. So the base model comes with a 45 kilowatt hour battery with a range of, and let me remind you that these are ranges based on the official WLTP test cycle. The Worldwide Light Transport Vehicle Protocol or something, I mean, so basically it's nonsense, but anyway, the, the base model, 45 kilowatt hour, comes with 211 miles range. A slightly more powerful model with a 58 kilowatt hour battery and a WLTP fantasy range of 260 miles is also available. And then at the top of the range, even more powerful version with a 77 kilowatt hour battery pack and a 335 mile WLTP range. So realistically, the ranges are about 180 miles for the cheapest version, around 200 miles for the middle one, and around 280 for the top model of the range. And all of these are super usable and super impressive. Now, the fastest accelerating model achieves a 0 to 62 miles an hour or 100 kilometers per hour in 6.6 .6 seconds. So clearly no slouch, but also not eye-watering. You know, it's, I mean, there's other cars that, electric cars that go considerably faster, but that's not the point because this is going to be considerably cheaper than those. But here's some very good news. The Cooper Bourne can charge at 125 kilowatts, which is really good to see. I think this is much more important than the range or the 0 to 60 speed. If you drive 150 miles, stop for 10 minutes, add another 150 miles range in that time using a larger uh, the larger and larger network of super rapid chargers that can deliver that power, the, lo the long distance driving is an absolute doddle. A Cupra claim any model can be recharged from 5% to 80% in as little as 35 minutes, which is pretty good. The top of the range, 77 kilowatt hour version, can add 100 kilometers of range in seven minutes. However, it's always important to remember that the battery needs to be very, very low for that kind of uh, charging speed. If it's half full, it's not going to get that kind of charging speed. Any charging over 100 kilowatts, however, is very, very fast and it makes a big difference. Now, the interior looks very swish and easy to live with. The high definition 12 inch floating infotainment screen comes as standards on all models. The Cupra press release states that the interior is upholstered in a range of materials that deliver a premium quality feel, including the standard bucket seats that use Sequal yarn, which is made from upcycled marine plastics, which I think means plastic rubbish that human beings have dumped in the sea. So it's better than leaving it there, take it out of the sea, make it into car seats. As for price, usual story, they will announce UK pricing uh, in the autumn of this year, 2021, with deliveries starting at the beginning of 2022. But here's some more sexy stuff. Now, this is impressive. The motor is a 16,000 revolutions per minute permanent magnet synchronous motor integrated above the rear axle. Rear wheel drive. Woot! was the same as the ID3. Uh, torque is transferred across the rear axle using a single speed transmission with differential ensuring smooth power delivery and driver confidence during cornering. I'm quoting the press release as you can probably guess. Clearly Cooper have taken the VW MEB platform and done some serious tweaking. The Bourne comes with four driver settings, range, comfort, individual, or, and I quite like this, 
Cooper. Yeah, you see, it's not simply performance or power. It's just Cooper. It's nice. The car uses a water-cooled multi-pouch lithium-ion battery system housed low and centrally in the car to offer the best centre of gravity with perfect 50-50 weight distribution, which is always really good. Now, this is important with battery uh, electric vehicles. The system's efficiency is monitored by the onboard thermal management system that maintains the battery's temperature, ensuring it stays within the optimal temperature range. The battery includes a base plate with integrated water channels connected to the coolant circuit. Now, this isn't new or breakthrough technology, but we, what we do know now is temperature-controlled batteries last much longer than air-cooled ones. And because the drivetrain and battery system are built by VW, they are manufactured at their Brunswick plant in Germany and in Chattanooga in the USA. And they are making big strides to power those plants from renewables. But of course, as we've learned recently in the next few years, these batteries will be made by Northvolt, who we featured recently, and Northvolt's factory is 100% percent renewably powered and that is really important finally connectivity clearly all new cars come bristling with driver assistance technology and the born is no different from an augmented reality head-up display system which projects crucial driving information the driver binnacle i've always loved a driver binnacle is smaller and more focused as a result so you don't need a big screen in, in right down in where the steering wheel is to see how fast you're going and there is an optional nine speaker beats registered trademark audio system the uh, voice assistant system i like this the voice assistant system can be accessed by pressing the button like it located on the steering wheel or simply saying the wake up words hola hola i love it <laughs> It's a Spanish car. And now this is very important. And it has to work really well or it's incredibly frustrating. The My Cooper app. We don't know if it works yet, but we'll find out. This means the driver can view battery status, schedule and manage charging. So you can switch the car on or off uh, using the app. You don't need to go to the car. Setting the desired state of charge of the battery ready for departure the next day or whenever it's going. You can do all that from the app. You don't have to go to the car. You can turn the climate system on, meaning you can heat or cool the car before you drive and while it's plugged in, meaning you don't reduce the car's range because the energy it's using to heat or cool is coming from the, from the uh, mains, from the, from the grid, if you like. And I mean, this isn't new. This isn't new. Uh, you can use the app to plan a route, including charger locations on long journeys and send it to the car before you head out. That's good. Nice. We like that. I just want to kind of saying this isn't new. I mean, Tesla have been doing I don't want to mention the T word ever, but they've been doing it for nine to ten years. Anyway, the cars come with predictive, adaptive cruise control, lane assist, and we like that. Side and exit assist technology helps to fill the gap of the driver's blind spots giving a visual and audible warning if maneuvering is uh, is has started and the vehicle detects an object out of view we like that and yes a lot of other cars have that but this does have it basically there's a lot of things to like so so we're just going to have to wait until later this year to have a test drive of the cupra born and then we hope to see these on the road in early 2022 so that's it the cupra born hola hola and if you have been Thank you for watching.